could have this power together. We could have the power to sit in our own three hundred thousand dollar limousines and have our cake and eat it too. That sounds nice. It does sound nice, which brings to my proposition I have for you today. I want you to eliminate your fellow accountant, Mr. Albert Swanson. How much will you pay me? My fee is generally one million dollars. You're not gonna do it. Well, how about two million? I'll do it. You see, Mr. Musgrove, your fellow accountant, Mr. Albert Swanson, has been sitting upon a large fortune for about the past 40 years. How large? How does $33,000 billion sound? Sounds fake. It is fake. It's only $12 billion. Uh, that's still pretty good. Do you realize the power and the money we will have with this fortune? Probably about $12 billion worth. Correct. So the leprechaun says that if a pot of gold and the pickle doesn't go there. That it was a cucumber. So I heard you were hired to kill me. Yeah. Who told you? Morrison James. Well, he hired me to kill you. Yeah. How much did he offer you? Two million. <laughs> Got the sucker up to three and a half. Nice. Yeah. Hey, how about we kill each other? And split the money. That's a good idea, but I got a better one. Huh. How about we keep our money and we kill Morris and James? We steal his money. And his yacht? That's having our cake and eating it too. Biatch. Well, Mr. Musgrove, Mr. Swanson, how'd you guys get into my humble abode? You left the door unlocked. I guess I really need to start locking that door. What can I do you for, gentlemen? You hired us to kill each other. Indeed I did, Mr. Swanson. You see, I thought I came up with a foolproof plan, but in the end it turns out that I'm the fool. Good work, boys. So what should we do about this? You boys are like me. You're gentlemen. You like power. You like money. You see, Mr. Swanson, you are sitting upon a large fortune, which I would love to get my paws on. And Mr. Musgrove, I do believe you'd love to get your paws on it as well. Now I'm thinking, Mr. Swanson, maybe the three of us can make some sort of a deal. I think I have a different deal in mind. And what, Mr. Swanson, is the deal that you are thinking of? This deal involves me cutting off your testicles and shoving them down your throat. Taking those snooty glasses off and shoving each one up your nostril. Plucking out your mustache hair by hair and feeding it to my rats. Then taking your toes, cutting them off with wire cutters, and sticking them in my breast pocket to show my friends when I'm at fancy parties. After that, I will grab my big stack of money, I will wave it, in your now bloody nostrils, with testicles down your throat, cut off your ears, rub it on my money, and then spend it on booze and cigars. Cigars of which that are illegal in this country. Cuban, at least in marijuana. The kind of which you won't be able to smoke with your big bottom lip ripped off, formed into a wallet to carry my wads of cash that I will take to the grocery store to buy Skittles, lollipops, Things to lure your daughter into my car. After that, I'll shove my foot so far up your butt, you'll have athlete's tongue. After that, I'll rip off your tongue, shove it in your ears, or the chasms I left there when I ripped them off and made flip-flops out of them to take down to the pool where your daughter swims, and I put her in my car again. Then, I'll take your wife out for a nice steak dinner where I'll show her the mustache hairs, the wallet I made out of your big bottom lip, and the ears I shoved in my breast pocket to show my friends at fancy parties. And your tips in there too. So how about that for a deal, Mr. James? Now Mr. Musgrove, Mr. Swanson. Did I mention plucking every hair out of your head 
and wearing it as pubic hair in my porno movies. All of that sounds pretty gruesome. And I'm a man that can hold his temper. But now the thing is here, is the only thing that can piss me off is when somebody messes with my mustache. And right there, Mr. Swanson, Mr. Musgrove, you gentlemen have crossed the lines. We could have had an empire together. Now I have enough money and power to guarantee you that every step you take, somebody will be behind you boys watching you. And when the time is right, he'll strike and you boys will be dead and I will have both of your empires in my grasp. Do you understand me, gentlemen? Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, no, let's stick with the original plan. We get him. Mm -hmm. Mr. Morris? Yeah, we can, uh, you know, kill him, take his empire, his cake. Oh. It's beyond. So then we could have our cake and eat it. Like you think. Are right, you tell him. You tell him. I get carried away and gruesome when I tell him. I don't really speak English. Mm. All right, listen here, Mr. Morris and James. If I may interrupt, Mr. Swanson, you don't need to repeat that conversation. I was standing right there when it took place. Now, let me tell you boys something else. I am a fighter, and I think that's something that you underestimate about me. You may come in here and try to take my empire from under my feet whilst I'm trying to control yours, or as it could have been, Share yours with everybody. But it's greed that I stand for, gentlemen. And as long as I'm alive, greed will prevail. And I will fight for my right to be greedy and to have my cake. And eat it too. Hey, Mr. Musgrove. What else? So you're, uh, you're Panamanian, right? So you, you carry a knife, don't you? I think I have just the one for this job. Ah. Let's go. Well, it sounds like it's the end of Mr. Morrison.